Let us make some waves. The start of every wave is the disturbance of an oscillator. Here I have an oscillator, a pendulum. Let's disturb it. This is our disturbed pendulum and you can see that in this case the pivot point is not perfectly fixed. The pendulum pivots about this wire and the wire has some elasticity and that means some of the energy associated with the oscillation can be passed on along this wire to a second pendulum here. Let's fix this second pendulum and place it at rest. We now talk about a coupling. The wire couples the second pendulum to the first pendulum. Observe the two pendula. You see that initially the first pendulum is in motion with a large amplitude. However, gradually the second pendulum picks up some of the energy and starts moving as well and the amplitude of the second pendulum increases while the amplitude of the first pendulum decreases. Let's observe this for a moment. The first pendulum is now almost at rest while the second pendulum has now achieved the amplitude that originally we had with the first pendulum. Now the first pendulum is absolutely at rest. Now, the opposite will happen. The second pendulum will transfer energy and, in fact, momentum along the coupling wire to the original pendulum, which, as you can see, now is picking up in speed and the amplitude increases. Now, we come in close to the original amplitude and you can see at the same time, because energy is conserved, the motion of the second pendulum slows down and what we have just observed is a wave propagating along the coupling to a second oscillator where it is reflected it propagates back to the first oscillator and in a moment we will again see a reflection of the wave at this first oscillator and it will travel back to the second oscillator you might say this is not a wave, but indeed it is. We have a system of one, two coupled oscillators, coupled via this wire. In a typical wave, you will have many more oscillators coupled to each other, but the minimum is two. And the concept of a wave is that an oscillation, now obvious on the second pendulum, passes on its energy and its momentum to a second oscillator via a coupling. The coupling can be realized in different ways. In this case, it's a flexible wire. So how does a wave start? Every wave starts with a disturbance of a first oscillator, as illustrated in this cartoon. The drop of the coconut wakes up the bloke in the hammock the hammock is connected to a buoy. The buoy moves and oscillates and that creates waves in the ocean. So we have one oscillator coupled to a second oscillator and then via its buoyancy coupled to the water which is a long chain of many oscillators which are the individual water molecules in the water. In our example, we have a transverse wave. In a transverse wave, the oscillation is perpendicular to the propagation of the wave. The propagation of the wave is along the coupling wire, but the direction of the oscillation, in both cases, is perpendicular to the propagation direction. Newton's cradle is an example of a longitudinal wave. Here the disturbance of the first wall will make it oscillate and then pass on its momentum and energy to the next ball, which again passes on energy and momentum to the next and to the next 
and to the final ball. The final ball will then oscillate and the wave gets reflected and the same happens again until we have reflection on this side and again momentum and energy pass is passed through, reflected, energy momentum is passed through, reflected and so on. And this goes very fast which indicates that the coupling between the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 oscillators is rather strong. We talk about a strong coupling if the propagation speed is fast and a slow coupling, a weak coupling, if the propagation speed is slow, as we saw in our first example. Let's do this for the Newton pendulum. You can see how fast the wave propagates from the left to the right and back to the left and back to the right. This is another example of a transverse wave. Our wave machine is disturbed at the bottom and you can see that the wave propagates transversely. The oscillations are perpendicular to the propagation direction transversely to the top. At the top the wave is reflected and propagates downward until it is reflected again at the bottom. i show you again. In this case the coupling is somewhat weaker than in Newton's cradle so that the wave speed, the propagation speed, is slower. Reflection coming back. Reflection coming back. The wave machine is very instructive because it allows us to introduce the concept of wavelength. If I carefully displace this red ball, you can see that due to the torsion of the coupling wire we obtain a sinusoidal shape which reflects the shape of the wave. And this blue ball is 90, 90 degrees phase shifted with respect to the red ball, pi half. And you can expect if we would go further that we need another 90 degree and another 180 degrees to find a ball that is in exactly the same position as the red ball. So the wavelengths of this wave along the wave machine is exactly 4 times 4 ball separations. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 and double that 16 ball separation is the wavelength. And that illustrates how wavelength is defined. It's the distance between two oscillators that oscillating in shape. The red oscillator oscillates in phase with a phase shift of 360 degrees with an oscillator with a ball further down the wave machine and in fact 16 balls down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 and another 8. We thus record our observation that mechanical waves arise when oscillating point masses have flexible couplings. And such a situation in which we have a system of such oscillators we call a medium. The oscillators form a medium. To reinforce this observation I've illustrated here two point masses that have a fixed connection, a fixed coupling. In that case we have a center of mass here, a center of mass there. The fixed coupling now redefines the center of mass to a point in the middle. This does not allow for oscillations. However, once we make the connection, the coupling, flexible, for example with a spring as shown here, we can have an oscillation of the left point mass and the energy and momentum of that oscillation can be transferred via this flexible coupling to the oscillator on the right, the point mass on the right. So whenever we have a flexible coupling between oscillating point masses, we permit energy and momentum transfer. Then we talk about a wave. Let us summarize these observations. All waves start with an oscillator that is disturbed. This may be our oscillating mass. Then, once disturbed, it carries a total energy which is given by its kinetic energy plus its potential energy, k half times x squared, whereby x is the displacement of this oscillator 
either this way or that way and k is the spring constant. If we for example imagine that the oscillation is performed by a mass suspended by a spring. This is the energy that is passed on to the next oscillator. And once that has happened, the oscillation comes to a rest. Now, the oscillator also carries momentum because when the mass moves downward, there will be a momentum vector downward, which has its maximum when the mass goes through its rest position and becomes zero at the turning point. And then beyond the turning point, the momentum vector switches direction again has maximum when the oscillator goes through the rest position and then again at the other turning point changes direction so that it points downward. Momentum is conserved. Therefore, if this oscillator comes to rest, it has to have been passed on to the next oscillator. So we also note that momentum is passed on from one oscillator of a medium to the next oscillator of the medium to the next oscillator of the medium. So both energy and momentum can be passed on gradually if the coupling is weak in a medium or very rapidly as we saw with Newton's cradle. Important is that the oscillators are connected by a flexible coupling. The coupling can be in line with the oscillation then we talk about a longitudinal wave or it can be perpendicular to the oscillation then we talk about talk about a transverse wave so in the longitudinal wave case we have the propagation direction and the oscillation directions aligned. In the case of a transverse wave we have 90 degrees between propagation direction and oscillation direction. That's how we distinguish longitudinal and transverse waves. If the coupling is strong, the coupling between the oscillators, we have a fast wave, a large propagation velocity. C, the propagation, that's how we want to denote the propagation speed C, C is large. If we instead have a weak coupling as we saw right at the beginning where the wave only gradually moved from one oscillator to the next then we have a slow wave and the propagation speed is small. So you can see that the entirety of all the coupled oscillators form a medium and that the strength of the coupling determines the wave speed. Therefore we can say the medium, the properties, the physical properties of the medium determine the wave speed. And we can also record that a wave may be defined as the transport of energy and momentum along a system of coupled oscillators which we call the medium. Importantly, mass is never transported by a wave. This is a common misconception. It is the energy of the oscillators and their momentum that are passed on from oscillator to oscillator and therefore energy and momentum are transported by the wave. A wave 
is the transport of energy and momentum along the system of coupled oscillators the medium these are the keywords a wave transport energy momentum and the system of coupled oscillators which we call the medium that's how we define a wave every phenomenon that falls under that description is a wave therefore this is our wave definition <laughs>